Hey everybody, I have a special request today. So this is a donated session for me to help heal trapped souls. And this is associated with an object near our earth. It's called the Black Knight. You can look it up on Google. And some will say it's space junk or some will say, you know, it's a spacecraft, ex extraterrestrial spacecraft. And I went and visited this um, black knight, this object. And my experience with it is that it, um, it, it has souls associated with it. So whether it is a spa alien spacecraft or maybe it's a planet that blew up and some chunk off of a planet, I, I don't know. But there are souls connected to it. And so, so this was um, kindly donated. This session was booked by one of my patrons so we could um, explore it all the way through and share here on YouTube. So I want to thank you so very much for this. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. I think there's so, so much we can learn. You know, in, in the human world, we, we want to have a logical understanding of things and we want to be able to define what is it exactly. And if we let go of the definitions, we can start to see the infinite value of anything because we can only conceive of what something is so much. So what, are the, what is it that we can't see? And when I do a journey or project my consciousness um, to this object, I'm going into um, more of an expanded uh, viewpoint. It doesn't have to be associated with what one person said or another person said. It's just my personal experience when I go visit this object this is my personal experience with it. Um, so I think it's just absolutely beautiful for us to share in this experience together and see what we can do to um, fill it with light and support souls that are connected and associated with this object. So I'll read um, what you had said. You, you said, hello, Abby, I would love to revisit the healing and releasing of the souls connected to the Black Knight. Um, you are doing this during the December Zoom, um, live Zoom. This is on Patreon. You can call on Christ Consciousness, Ra, the Sun God, the Archangels, or any beautiful spirits that would like to participate. I want to continue being guided to help point out areas where souls are trapped and in need of love, loving healing. I truly believe this will also help us all in ways we wouldn't be able to conceive of going forward. You said so many kind things in this. I just want to thank you for being who you are and for taking this step. It's really generous. It's um, enriching my life, enriching all of our lives, and it's it's helping to enrich these souls, which we, we're all benefiting here. Like every single person is benefiting here. And it's like you have no idea how these ripples, they're just, they're just so phenomenal. And when you, when you're like completely aware, like when, uh, this is one thing I always think about is once I've shed this human layer and I get to be my infinite soul, I get to really understand how like everything has impacted everything. Like you're going to understand how truly valuable that this effort of yours is to help these souls. Like you're going to understand and it's going to be such a powerful experience. Like I get to be a part of that too. <laughs> We're all sharing in it right now. The love <laughs> that just like keeps dominoing out forever and ever and ever. All right. Shall we get into this now? Let's go explore this black night. <sighs> okay. Right now, there's just a sense of emptiness. And I experience myself just, uh, I guess you can call it anti-gravity. I just feel like I'm floating. And I'm just kind of guided by the anti-gravity sensation. And there's nothing really to see right now. It's just a sensation, a feeling. There's nothing that can be done to... I guess, create a ricochet to create um, a ripple, a sound, movement, change. It's just an existence. It's just a floating existence. It's not easy to go deeper into this existence just yet. Because right now, you just have to be.
I feel like something of myself is merging with the object. And it's kind of like a house. Houses are alive more than we know. So if you merge with the energy of your own house, what is it like? <laughs> we merge with the energy of this um, structure. What is it like? This is what it's like right now. It just feels lost, to be honest. I feel like I would parallel it to times in my life where I just, I felt anti-gravity and that there was no change and I was just going to have to just be like this. And nothing was going to impact um, to create the ricochet, to create a change, a ripple of change. It just, nothing was going to do that. I'm just going to have to be. I choose to see that Ra, the sun god, is here. I love Ra, the sun god. This isn't like a fictional character or something. This isn't a make-believe person. Ra the Sun God is legit. <laughs> he is a fatherly energy. He is ever-loving. I've not experienced a, a dark or vulnerable um, side of him. He's really wise. And he's very um, patient. He's very open to anything that you have going on. And he shares really wise guidance. I love his energy. I like being around him. And he represents the sun. It's, it's a, a warmth and illumination, right? If you're ever going through a really dark time, go to the sun. Literally just imagine yourself in the sun and let that warmth and illumination do the work for you. But sometimes it's hard to remove the shadow from ourselves, you know? It's just to feel present in the warmth and illumination. So I'm creating that sensation and it's a bit weird because I'm very dizzy now. And I'm just gonna experience that this personality is coming from the object because it's, it's like um, the object is starting to spin and it's getting very dizzy instantaneously. And I feel like I'm going down, 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 and I'm spinning out of control. I'm spinning really fast. And it makes me feel kind of uh, nauseous, to be honest. But what Ra does is just stops. It just stops the spinning, stop the, stops the concept of going down. Um, stops all of that. Ra actually takes the object from our viewpoint and moves it to a totally other side of the universe. It's quite strange. I mean, I just see like a huge hand just pick it up and then just place it over there. <laughs> I was like, whoa, okay. Then I, I see a map and it's like, like a map of the universe. And it's like, dang, that's a big, that's like a big map. <laughs> I'm still in the map watching this. It's like, wow. You try to pull out a map in your car, like that's old school, you know? Now imagine a map of the universe. <laughs> it's like, dang, I, it, there's got to be maps of the universe, you know? You feel like aliens have maps of the universe? Do they even need that? Is that something the human mind would think of? Or maybe it's something they would use just as much as we would use it. Like maybe it's just an intelligent thing that everybody would have just maps of the universe. Like the map isn't something that you just sense the coordinates in your heart. It's something that's intelligently pointed out on some kind of piece of paper or technology. So I'm witnessing the movement. It's actually horrible where this comes from. It stinks here. Uh... I don't know what the smell is. It um, smells perhaps like a maybe a coal mine. Smells like a burnt, a, a singeing my nostrils. It smells um, acidic. And I see lots of uh, black uh, kind of smog. It's everywhere. It's like everything is, is coated in this black dust.
So I ask Ra, what's the next thing? Ra um, guides me to a part of what is a planet, and it's quite huge. I mean, the Earth is not a big planet. This is a huge... I can't believe how huge this place is. It doesn't seem like there's any life here. But he asked me to put it into the planet, and the planet has got this lava sections. Just like rivers of lava, like oceans of lava, actually. It's just pretty crazy. And so you just place it in the lava. The object. The lava is really intelligent. It's like an intelligence. It's, it's a mind. It's uh, receiving this. It's digesting this. It's learning about this. It's talking about this. I don't know what it's telling me, but it's a very loving um, and intelligent being. But it thinks more like, um, I guess, a computer in a way. But it does emanate love and gratitude for information, new information. And once this goes inside um, this planet, it's almost like it starts to burp up um, bubbles of lava. Ra says, um, let's go. And he's going to take me somewhere. I don't know where. I feel kind of strange, like, okay, so I'm supposed to just leave that in the lava? Like, is that what, that's what I do now? <laughs> okay, show me what the next thing is. I'm just going to go with the flow here. Okay. He takes me to a totally other planet, and this has... It's just so many beautiful trees, and they don't look... They're definitely trees. I don't know how to explain why they look different than our trees. Maybe because they have very specific branches that have then very specific branches, and it's almost like islands of branches. And it's really ridiculously thick trunk with these islands, like these branches that have like islands of branches. I just... It, they just seem like... it. It's got these like very specific sections of, of branches that are separate from other branches, okay? It's just as its branch island here, and then here's another branch island over there, and so it's just kind of like that. And these massive trees, but these trees are extremely intelligent. I'm just baffled right now. I can hear their intelligence just like the lava. And these trees are talking about um, the information that's in the lava and they're communicating through their branch islands with other trees and those trees is branch islands. Kind of makes me think of a brain in a way, how a brain functions with the synapses and like it's got these like little um, branches that are communicating with the other branches of other trees. The trees are creating a diagram in my mind and I hear the sound of um, unfathomable sadness I I don't know how to explain the diagram it's not like a an architectural structure and the diagram is the sound of of people and people that are crying And it's weird because there's some kind of ripping. Um, I see a calendar and there's a rip of from one month to the next month. But somehow when we rip the page off, we get to the next month, that's normal. It feels like um, face that it's, the skin is ripped off of it. It's horrible. I experience being really afraid. And... There's some kind of fire that comes from inside myself and it burns from the inside out and I'm just a specific, there's specifically a female energy and I hear her cries the loudest right now. 
And right now I'm just supposed to listen. I can't really do anything yet. Uh, one thing about sounds, like when I hear all the screaming sounds, I can't, I just have to let them be because I can't hear anything else. And so I can't really tell what I'm supposed to do or what I'm supposed to make of this because I can't work with anything but the sound of screaming. And I don't feel inspired to neutralize it or do anything with it yet because I'm still understanding more, okay? I really feel strongly that the this is was actually touched by or had a connection with um, real incarnate beings. Whether it was a spaceship or some kind of chunk off a planet or something, it, it definitely had interacted with real beings, real um, consciousness, real souls have familiarity or relationship with it in a really sorrowful way. I don't feel cheerful. I don't feel, um, I want to bring in some beautiful elements of nature. And it's like, I can't do that yet. It's almost like it's got to get this out of its system. And this doesn't feel like it's a quick, I don't, I'm just still lingering in here. So either time is elongated or this, this wasn't over quickly. There's slowly a, a muting of sorts, but I still feel a sense of agonizing pain. But there's just no sound. And Ra tells me that um, it's, it's like we're almost through this. That just kind of be patient is, is what he's referencing. I'm starting to get pulled back to the sense of just being this anti-gravity like I started with. But I see myself with the trees and I say I don't know I don't know how to understand what you're telling me. And I see myself back at the lava. The lava is peaceful. The lava feels like it received nourishment and food. Not in a greedy or scary or disturbing way, actually in some kind of natural way. The planet was fed. And I see that um, there's a new scene and there's a key that goes into a like a treasure chest in a way but it's very delicate and beautiful and ornate and the key turns and then when it opens up i see it's a doorway it opens a doorway and i'm looking through the mirror and i see on the other side of the mirror souls that are made out of a black kind of ash and they're not souls, they're like people. And I see different age groups, like uh, a beginning and an end experience, a birth, um, a life path, like um, aging and death. And I know that we can, I, I don't know why I keep thinking of um, light a candle and that something of the fire is going to illuminate and is going to heal and is going to remedy. I see a wound and I see fire put upon the wound to seal it and how sometimes fire is painful but it has a way of um, having an alternate effect as being a tool for healing. And it can be a physical tool or it could be a spiritual tool, an energy tool.
I feel now a sense of rest. I feel now a sense of uh, sleep instead of anti-gravity and sort of feeling lost and kind of floating. I, I feel a sense of um, stillness and sleep. So Ra wants me to watch this energy go to sleep. And I say, what is the next thing? I still feel like there's a lot of dots and I don't know how to connect them in a way that I guess satisfies my logical mind. What is the next thing? He shows me another world and I feel like, uh, well, I'm definitely flying. And I'm, when you fly, you, it's like the sensation is, um, it's not about gliding so much as all the fresh air blowing in your face. There's just, it's all, it's like you're constantly tasting fresh air. It's like always, it's like, it's like, I, maybe I'm going to catch some bugs in the air. I don't, but I don't catch any bugs. Like, I'm like, ah, wow, this is great. <laughs> and I'm just like tasting the air and it's just like filling my mouth. Like, it's just like I eat air or something and I'm just having the most wonderful time. And I'm flying with like my big mouth is open. I'm just like letting air. I'm just like I'm letting air go into my body. <laughs> it is wonderful. And this type of planet is is like more an atmosphere than it is a land. And I feel this energy. It's elements. Like you have these tree spirits of this like earthy energy. You have this lava, uh, fire world energy. You have this air world energy. There's a reason this Ra's got something up his sleeve. And so I'm in this like air world and it's, it's so surreal. I feel like my life is, I live in the air. I, I eat the air. You know, it kind of reminds me of like a whale where they eat the tiny little plankton and somehow the plankton like fills the the belly of this giant whale like they eat enough somehow <laughs> it's like i feel like i'm eating something in the air that's it's just you just like let it in and it just fills you and it it feeds you and so freeing i just feel happy at every moment i feel everything is harmonious i don't i don't get a sense of uh wanting to even stop like wanting to land somewhere i don't i can get a sense of that i don't even get a sense of day or night i just get a sense of um i am free and it's like almost like the air becomes a water but it's not water because i'm just always kind of living in it and it's so ridiculously peaceful i say i really like that feeling and I go back to the trees that are wise. And then I go back to the lava that is, um, belly is full. And I, I start to appreciate these spaces for the way, that, for their wisdoms. I expect a water world is what I say to Ra. It's like, okay, I'm kind of onto your pattern here. So I'm expecting a water world, but maybe there isn't a water world for us. I don't know. Let's see what he says next. No, this doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't know what this is. I'm standing on a, a thin line and it's a world that's made out of shapes, basically. And I can see the intersecting line of forever and ever and ever and ever and ever of what is like shapes forever but it's a really complicated world it's almost impossible because you where is the direction and what direction like there isn't any every direction exists but sometimes you it's almost like you don't realize you could get absorbed into a shape and you have to move through it then as soon as you get absorbed into a shape you have to move through it while you're also in this like massive like grid work and it's really ridiculously 
I mean, how do you navigate it? I don't know how you navigate it. Like you're inevitably going to get pulled into some kind of shape. It's going to happen. And everything is kind of made out of black lines and a sort of clear substance. And apparently this is also another, I guess, planet, planet or it's another um, place that you can live. Your soul could live and it could explore a life here. And I'm like, dang, I don't want to explore a life here. <laughs> he, he smiles and he says, just watch. And he, says, he shows me that those that actually live associated with this don't see it from this perspective. They actually go into the intersecting lines and they actually live whole, there's a whole universe. There's like whole galaxies in here. It's like if you could take the map of the whole universe and put it in um, to this viewpoint in that the map of the whole universe is just a bunch of shapes and intersecting lines. Now, if you were to zoom in like a microscope, you're going to see galaxies, planets, and beings and that have no clue about one another and then those that do know about each other. And there's different dimensions of perspective. And he says that I'll find myself in here. So he kind of smiles because it's, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going in there. He's like, oh, you are in there. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, I'm in there. Oh, I guess I probably would be in there, wouldn't I? <laughs> that sounds like the place I'd probably wind up. <laughs> but it's it's actually when you zoom in, it's not as complicated somehow. It's it's almost like life um, is normal, like life, everyday life or something. It, but he shows me the trees in some way um, comprehend above, even above the viewpoint of the shapes. And the trees do. So they're connected to our world. Like we see trees, they're trees on other planets. Um, but somehow the tree um, can comprehend with a sight that, that can see this dimension of the shapes. And to see what is above, 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 above um, our perspective. And the lava seems to be a stomach that can digest information and can comprehend um, the expansion of the universe through its, its body, the body of lava. And this being in the air is just living in a, a free life. It, it doesn't think, it doesn't um, desire anything. It all just sort of exists with everything that it needs. And everything is interconnected. And I say, this is really, um, I feel like we're going up the ladder of a positive message here, Ra. And my experience with the Black Knight, my original experience was definitely despair. It feels like more has been nurtured or healed in this over time, even from that time, um, than what I originally felt. And again, we go back to the original moment where he takes his hand and he puts it in the lava. And he says, what do you think about that now? I say, I don't know. I, I guess as a human being, I feel like it deserves a proper burial. And so he wants to talk about that. I bring in your, your spirit. Your spirit. So, so you booked this session and I'm bringing your spirit here. I want to see what your spirit has to say about a proper burial. You instantly start to cry and you go to the scene with the woman and you want to help anybody that's in pain. And Ra shows you that um, this is one of the shapes. This is one of these um, nodes. And he wants you to take the image of the woman to the trees, he says. And you cry and you kind of feel bewildered, but then you snap out of it and say, okay, and you pick her up and you take the image of her and the sounds of her and you take her to the trees. And the trees um, actually open the earth and they absorb her into the ground and then they feed off of her body. And you like, I, I, you and I are both like, I don't know why this doesn't feel like a proper burial, but I understand that it is. And Ross smiles. And he says, um, let's give the memories back to nature. Let's give the memories back to the joys and the wisdoms of nature. Let's give this 
back to nature. And the souls can feel the nature all around them. And the nature isn't eating their souls like some sort of devourer of souls, like some evil thing. No, it's nurturing, it's um, blessed, it's um, grateful, it's learning from. It's growing in its own perspective and awareness. And what's interesting, he shows me what trees look like in another viewpoint, and they don't look like what we think they look like. And we see these uh, structures of wood and, you know, islands and branches or whatever. Um, that's how our mind deciphers what it looks like. And he shows me that they're like, like uh, these wise trees are connected to, I, I don't even know how to understand it. It's unfathomable. I, I see, uh, I see through the trees that I see another planet and I see that um, these beings, I don't know how they built the society, seems to be built out of metal and it's everywhere. It's like um, buildings are everywhere and they're really close to the surface, almost like they're built slightly underground, slightly above ground, but everything is the same height. And everything then flies in the atmosphere in these literally like cars that, that they're like flying spaceships, like the Jetsons, okay? It's just like moving around in the atmosphere. And I see that the eyes of the trees are watching this planet and the trees aren't actually growing here, but they exist here as well. Whether you could see them or not, the trees are also here. And he smiles because it, like apparently trees are very interesting beings. And they're not as simple as we, we perceive them to be. They're um, multidimensional and, and self-aware of that. <laughs> they're very self-aware of that. And you could say that they're also travelers of the universe. And I say, I, I don't know why I get to thinking about that, um, the structure of the Black Knight and that the trees are there too. He uh, kind of looks at me and he kind of shakes his head a bit about that one. He says sometimes um, it's almost like uh, sometimes you have to present um, a reminder almost like we had to recover memory at different levels of, of awareness. And so when I put that into the lava, the trees, the trees remembered about it. The trees um, recovered their memory. These trees, these consciousness, these specific ones, it was for them to remember. Out of all those trees and all the, the intersecting lines of the shapes of that um, other perspective, these, these trees, it's like they were the ones that needed to remember. So I, I ask you, what do you think about all this? You say that you want to give a, a part of, of everything that this, that this structure, that this Black Knight, that is past, present, future, that is souls that went through a tragedy. Um, you want to, in a way, create a memorial or a monument um, but you want to give them the memory of being free in the sort of the world of, of atmosphere. And there was no, there is no, it, it almost seems like a timeless reality because I don't recall anything of the past and I don't care about anything of the future. I just enjoy tasting the air and, and everywhere. Like I'm moving everywhere all the time. I'm in motion like a fish in a tank, you know, but I'm in an atmosphere. And I'm always tasting this fresh air and it's so delicious. And interestingly enough, this, this being, it's not so much the consciousness of the air this time, the element of the air is, it's like this being um, doesn't think, but yet its body is so full of information. And, and so we allow that the, it's like the spirit this, the pain and the suffering to move through what is the, the air that this being is so delightfully tasting and to um, rekindle a delightfulness in what is the recall or the memory. It doesn't have to hurt this being, but it can raise the spirits, right, of anyone else in the universe. 
is very powerful being without um, being aware of how powerful it is. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to care about that. I see the ash people are not so um, physically visible. And I'm starting to see them um, become a part of different planets. Even the planets that the trees can see, that these trees see, the one with all the Jetson kind of vehicles going around. And I mean, I'm telling you, the planet seems to have a very strange, it's like buildings are, are built like connected and they're built really close to the surface. And it's like everything is made out of a type of metal and it's, it's in a way smooth. And so that's, that's kind of what it looks like, but it seems quite barren. I don't know where the food source is or the water is but it seems full of life and, it, and everything makes sense here the way that it is makes sense and i see the spirit of these beings are in the eyes of the trees that are watching over this place and the spirit of these beings is part of the the belly of the lava that's so grateful and they feel peace here they feel like they're part of the mind of the trees and that they're part of the joy of the being that eats the air They're starting to become part of all the dimensions like Ra shows us with this weird viewpoint of many shapes and connected lines. And I see Archangel Metatron is here as well. And I see there's lots of beings that are here and they understand how this system works. And they show me that they don't, well, they can look into any of these shapes and they can look into the microscope to see that what is beneath the surface of everything. They don't dare, um, it's like alter it. They just let it be and they watch. Sometimes they send um, love and support. I'm just like you're doing here by booking this session. Like you, you are participating in the higher perspective, wanting to reach um, souls in suffering to share love and support. And you're making a difference in the whole vast universe. You're impacting other planets in ways you didn't even know. You're gathering together souls. It's what I feel Ra is wanting to share is that there is so much wonderment and so much joy to be had. And there's so much in the exchanges that we have with one another that one thing leads to another thing, leads to another thing, leads to another thing. And while they seem as though they have nothing to do with each other, everything is kind of, um, like I say, like the domino effect. It just has a way of rippling. And we're a part of that ripple. Like we impact it, we receive it, we participate in it, we ripple into each other's lives in ways we don't even know how. And the universe is just so, such an extraordinary place for a human mind. Um, it's kind of special in that way, you know? So now I see that Ra is part of the fire of the planet and that this gift went into the digestion of his own heart. And he closes his eyes and he smiles and he fills it with warmth and light and creates a doorway for all the souls to return to heaven. And I remember the key and the treasure chest and the doorway and the beings of ash. And another time and space are already through the door of Ra's heart into a space of illumination in heaven. And then he goes, phew, wow, life is such a journey. <laughs> and he smiles. That's, that's the last thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, you never know what you're going to get. I feel like I have so much to think about right now. <clears throat> I feel so impacted by this in ways I don't know how to put words to it yet. It's like the physical universe, the spiritual universe, the memory universe. 
Um, what is above our imagination of what, you know, what is beyond this universe, what connects the, the dots of this universe. It's like some other space, some other viewpoint, some other experience and how it can impact, impact each other. <laughs> and we're all like living in sync. You know what I mean? It's really incredible. Wow. Thank you so very much for this. Thank you everybody for watching. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.